I understand that some of you are completely new to the world of 3D animation. So what I'm going to do in this video tutorial is cover some basics, uh, cover some terms and how some terms are misused so that you can uh, become better at communicating with people that are in the same field. And also when I start using terms like, you know, subdivision services and uh, vertices and faces and stuff like that, you'll know what I'm talking about throughout the rest of the workshop. Okay, the first word is modeling. This is the process of making a 3D mesh. It's nothing more and nothing less than that. It's just, you know, the 3D form. So a modeler, their primary job is going to be, you know, creating just a, you know, flat, uh, you know, flat shaded gray looking mesh. So it's going to be like someone who works with clay. They don't paint the clay. They just manipulate the clay to make a 3D form. And that's what a modeler will do, you know, thus the term. A model refers to a 3D object in general. So this is a really general term. Uh, it usually refers to both the 3D form, the textures, and material properties to make the object look the way it does. So a model can mean the whole package. So if you have a character model, it's going to be referring to not only the mesh, which is just the raw 3D information, but also the coloring, the textures, and sometimes that could also include the rig, which is the armature inside that allows you to take a character and pose them and put them in different positions. Okay, now off to some uh, more Blender-specific terms, which um, are actually used elsewhere as well. You have a mesh, and that is the actual 3D data that defines the form. Now, a mesh is made up of three things. You have a vertex, which is a single point in space that has uh, no size. You have an edge, which is also infinitely small, or I guess thin, which is just a line that connects two vertices together. And then you have faces. Now, this is when a mesh starts to create a you know 3D solid form, is when you take a space between edges and then fill it in as a face. And a face can be either a triangle or a quad. Now the term polygon is sometimes not properly used in the world of 3D computer graphics. So let's clarify some terms, how they're misused, and what people usually mean when they say them. Okay, what you see before you are polygons. If you've taken geometry, this isn't going to be a surprise. A triangle is a polygon. A square or a quad is a polygon, a pentagon is a polygon, and this funky little shape we have here, that is also a polygon. All polygons can be made from triangles. Triangles are polygons, quads are polygons, and f-gons and f-gons are also polygons. An n-gon and an f-gon is basically what these two are, as far as how they're used in a 3D application. A polygon count is the number of polygons that make up a character or a scene. Now, since graphics hardware break everything down into triangles, a more correct term would actually be triangle count. Now, here's the reason why. Now, Blender uses the term face count. Blender says that this monkey is 500 faces. That includes all the quads and all the triangles. But a quad is secretly made of two triangles. If you want to tell a game programmer uh, how many polygons are in a model, you're probably going to want to give them this number, which is the number of triangles, which in this case is 968. Now, why isn't that 1,000 if this is exactly 500 faces? That's because there are some triangles in this mesh. Now, the reason why that's important is because graphics hardware is limited. If you give them this number, they're you know, there's a good chance that they're going to try and put uh, twice as many objects than it can actually handle. So when they say polygon count, they probably mean triangle count. So you're going to have to uh, figure that out when you give them that number. Okay, now let's go on to uh, different ways that you can smooth a mesh. Now, this is what our mesh usually looks like. A lot of characters that you see actually look very similar to this. It looks like the uh, model has just been chiseled out. 
and it doesn't look very smooth. Well, there are two ways that we can smooth it. The first method is done using garage shading. This smooths out the lighting between vertices without changing the geometry or the 3D shape. So as I switch between uh, these two images, you can see that the shape hasn't changed, it's just the lighting has been smoothed out between the faces. This is actually a very, very fast way, uh, you know, processing time-wise, to make something look smooth. Now the second way is subdivision services. This smooths out the 3D form by adding more faces, which is nice because we can make the 3D shape smooth without having to put all that work into doing it by hand. So if you can imagine how long it would take to create this mesh as opposed to this one by hand, that's a big difference. So we can do what's called a cage, which looks like this, and then smooth it out so it looks like that. But still, if you look at the model that's been subdivided, you know, it still doesn't look smooth because it has a bunch of small uh, faces on it. Well, all we have to do is use both garage shading and subdivision surfaces, and then we can have a shape that looks like this. Another thing to point out is that meshes are hollow, but even though these meshes are hollow, there are still things that we can do to make them look like they have depth inside of them. Uh, for example, the way light passes through an object with high density like water, glass, or even diamond, that gives it you know, a sense of depth, even though these diamonds, just like our monkey mesh, are hollow. And like this hand, there isn't any flesh inside of the hand, but it looks like there is. So there are different tricks that we can use. Okay, so hopefully that will give you a crash course for uh, terms and principles used in 3D animation. So now let's go ahead, now that you've uh, gotten your feet wet with some terminology, let's go ahead and start learning the Blender interface.